all right guys so welcome to today's video right here in today's video i would like to show you the three main hitbox types so there's gonna be a quick guide on hitbox and this is my third time recording this video because in the first two times it didn't want to record the audio but yeah with that being said i've prepared a short script for you right here which is just you punching okay so nothing too special what we're doing right here basically is that we are you know we have a bunch of variables right here so our player our character and something called the user input service this one is responsible to detect the user the user's input and we are making use of an event called input begin okay and this triggers when an input has been done and when an input has been done we receive information about the input itself and something called game processed event which tells us whether this input was done while interacting with in-game elements or not and we of course want to check for the case uh, that uh, the input was not done while interacting with in-game elements. That's the reason why we use this check. And if this is fulfilled, then we want to check if the Q key has been pressed. And if that if that is the case, then we want to play an animation, which is then our punching animation right here. I've just shown to you. Okay. Now let's start with the touched event. That is the first type of hitbox you can do, and something I would recommend you to. But you, it is an it is an option. Okay, you can do that, but I do not recommend this to you. So what we basically have to do is that we have to refer to a part, okay? And in this case, we have our now wait now 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 not right arm, right hand, okay? In this case, we have an we have an animation which is playing, okay? And if we take a look at which arm is swinging and which arm is supposed to hit something, it is the right arm, okay? And especially our right hand. So what we want to do is that we basically want to check if this right hand has touched something. And if that is the case, then we can receive the thing which has been touched by the right, right hand by putting hit, hit in here. Now, we want to check if um, this hit right here, so in the best case, this hit is a is another body part which we have just which we have just, just touched, okay? And the best way to ensure that this is a body part is to check if this body part is inside of a body. And when is a body a body? Of course, when it, when it contains a humanoid. So all we got to do is that we have to check if hit parent so hit is basically one of these things okay if one of these things dot parent which is dummy contains a child called humanoid that is the first thing okay if that is the case then we can tell that we have just touched an, an enemy and then we can deal damage to this enemy now when i play this then there is a there is a problem to this okay or there are two more things we have to add okay as you can see we receive or we deal too much damage for one punch so in order to take care of this we have to do the following we have to add some kind of debounce to this and i recommend you to add an int value or or to store that this player has been touched already okay and one of the ways to do this is to create an int value or another instance inside of that uh character model right here so you can probably uh, create a table as well so do this via tables but i'm gonna do this the uh int value instance thing whatsoever because it, this is just easier to do for me at least and then we all you gotta do is that you have to check whether this instance right here does not exist inside of this character model and you can do that by just checking if hit parent find first child hit he name equals nil there we go and one more thing we have to check is that our hit dot parent so the character model in which our hit body part is inside of does not equal our character because depending on your animation this can also be the case that you basically touch yourself and then you would deal damage to yourself and that is not good so what happens right here is that we are creating an int value as i've told you inside of this character model we are calling it hit and then our player's name to identify this part to our player and then we are destroying it after one second and this one second becomes the time in between each damage dealing occasion yeah so you can only deal damage per one second but yeah this is basically how the touched event works okay you have a part in this case the right hand you check if it has been touched and if it has been touched then you deal damage to the person who has touched it that is a good summary in my opinion now next one is gonna be a uh an alternative to the region three and i'm gonna show you what this does so 
first of all we have to create a hitbox an actual hitbox which is gonna be a port and give this a specific size 242 and make sure that and collide as faults and let's create a belt let's belt this part to our humanoid root part okay let's check this out let's see what it does okay so as you can see this is our hitbox now wait okay so now we can make use of something called get parts in part and all we gotta do is that we have to add the part inside of here so what happens now is that this thing returns us an array means a table of every part which is now inside of this part inside of our hitbox okay and what we can do now is that we can check for each part whether it is a body part or not and if that is the case then you guys know what to do we have to check if it contains a humanoid and so on and so on so this is our hitbox now and let me actually print out every part which is inside of there. Yeah, as you can see, we have a bunch of parts in here. And all we gotta do now is that we have to check if these parts are... Now, if these parts are parent of something which contains a humanoid. And v.parent, so the character model of those body parts does not equal our character model. So we are not hitting ourselves. And if there is this hit instance inside of there, which we have to create, okay? Hit the name. So for the sake of debouncing everything. The local axe instance new int value uh, the parent axe name equals hit the name x not game debris at item x one there we go and now we have forgot the most important part which is to deal damage right here so take damage 10 and this should work now let me make this transparent so do not forget this and yeah <laughs> so this is basically another way of detecting damage wait i've done something wrong i've probably forgot this equals nil yeah so in the first recording session I, i've done the exact same mistake right here but yeah yeah as you can see this works as well so everything which is inside of this invisible part now is being hit okay so this check should seem familiar to you um, as I've told you, this returns an array. We are looping through the array, and for each part, we are checking if it is inside of a character model, which contains a humanoid, if this character model is not our character itself, and if this character model does not contain this hit instance, which is there for debounce purposes. I haven't really explained this part right here, because it should be obvious, but um, I can still explain it. So we are creating a part, which is then going to be our hitbox. We are giving it a certain size. We are making it can collide faults. We are making it invisible, and then we are welding it. And, and what this weld does is that it, it attaches the hitbox in front of us. Okay, and for, that, for those purposes, we have to say that part zero is our humanoid root part so part zero is always the part you're welding something onto you're attaching something onto in this case we are attaching the hitbox to our player and in this case to uh go more into detail we are attaching the hitbox to our root part okay so part zero is our root part part one is the hitbox and this is a c-frame which moves the hitbox in front of us and yeah that's all about this region three alternative now the last one is going to be the raycast so ray settings, raycast params new, ray settings, filter descendant instances, C ray settings, filter type, and then 
raycast filter type blacklist local ray workspace raycast and then the origin which is going to be our root parts position and then the direction which is going to be our root parts look vector c frame look vector multiplied with two and then the settings if ray then print ray instance name there we go so this is how you write down a ray cast and okay i've i've done a typo right here upper torso there we go so as you can see it detects the port which which it has hit so what happens right here now let me let me just quickly show you how you can imagine the ray cast so ray is basically a line okay which has an origin and which has an ending point somewhere and we have three arguments in here the first one is the origin okay so you have to tell the ray to start somewhere the second one is called direction but you can you can imagine this as some kind of ending point okay so it basically tells you in which direction it is heading but the, the direction also determines the ending point at the end okay just because i tell i tell the ray to go uh to the west it doesn't infinitely go to the west okay it, it stops somewhere and that is determined via the second argument right here the third one is are, are those ray settings i'm gonna talk about later but yeah imagine the ray as some kind of line everything which touches this ray which intersects the ray you know which just gets into its way is then being recognized and is triggering is triggering the ray and then we can just continue down here with with uh, whatever we want to do to this to this person to this part which has touched the ray okay now to this to this to these ray settings what we have to do is that we have to create a new template let's say so raycast parameters the new creates a new raycast parameters template and then and then we can add a bunch of settings to this template okay we can tell this template to filter descendants instances what this means is that everything we put inside of this table so every instance then is going to be filtered out by this table okay and i'll just quickly talk about the filter you can also determine the filter type which can either be blacklist or whitelist i hope that you guys know the difference so everything which is blacklisted is not allowed everything which is whitelisted is allowed and everything which is not which is not whitelisted is not allowed okay everything on the whitelist is allowed but not but, but everything which is not on the whitelist isn't allowed okay so that, that's just to quickly tell the difference and um what this does now is that according to whatever filter type you have selected it filters each instance in here and not the instance itself only so if i put dummy in here it doesn't only filter the dummy but also everything inside of here and everything inside of these parts and everything inside of these parts and so on okay so literally anything which has to do with this instance right here and this is how it works okay and then we can go go ahead and create an array by referring to the workspace call on raycast and then adding these three arguments and then if ray means if something has touched the ray then we can go on and we can refer to this part which has touched the ray by doing ray.instance okay and we have to do a bunch of checks right here as you guys probably know so ray instance uh parent find first child humanoid then and then we can deal damage to this thing now the cool thing about ray casting is that in in comparison to what we've done before we do not need to check if the character model of our enemy is not our character model okay that is automatically done via this filtering option right here so we are filtering out our character from being detected by the ray and what we also do not have to do is that we do not have to take care of the debounds uh, yeah that is basically it so that's to that's uh, all about raycasting i have to tell you about yeah uh, yeah so if you see any module script on the dev form whatsoever you can break most of them down to these three types of hitboxes technically the the, the region three alternative one is a hitbox and the rest is not so i wouldn't call raycast a hitbox or touch even the hitbox 
but this region three alternative is surely hitbox and yeah with that being said guys thanks for watching leave a like subscribe share this video to all your friends leave feedback in the comment section guys take care and see ya